Fonza CEO and founder of Extropian. I'm joined again by my colleagues, Sean and Justin, and the amazing Raul Gamboa, one half of uh, Agora Media, the, you know, the marketing uh, arm that's behind some of the amazing visuals and amazing uh, posts that we have out. So with that being said, Raul, um, I want you to kick us off. You know, we're branching off from our last episode uh, where we defined uh, Extropian, uh, why we came up with that name, why it's so meaningful to us. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to talk about our movement that is uh, based behind Extropian, which is the redefine what's possible movement. And uh, Raul, I know you had some uh, some questions that you wanted to ask us. And um, if you could go ahead and kick those off, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I do have a few questions for you guys, um, specifically just around what this all means and who it's for and, and just everything about this technology. But uh, uh, first, I guess let's let's start it off uh, simple. So, what did you say that that slogan was again? Could you tell Could you tell the audience one more time? <laughs> it was the redefine what's possible. Uh... Re <laughs> redefine what's possible, and and what, yes. is that, what does that necessarily mean to you guys? So, that phrase. I guess I'll go ahead and get us started. Uh, redefine what's possible. Um, you know, our technology is is uh, and the, this company. Um, we had to redefine what was possible to build this technology um, or to, to, to make it, you know, to bring it to fruition. Um, at the time that I, you know, I started working on this, you know, there was a lot of people that told me, oh, that's not possible. A lot of people in the technology sector that, you know, they didn't think that I could bring something like this to market. And, you know, it wasn't uh, the abilities to, to make something like this weren't possible at that time. So even from then, you know, um, my thought process and and going into to building this, I was you know already redefining what's possible. Um, as we started building this out, we identified that our technology and, and the goal for this technology was to help people um, redefine what's possible. Um, you know, we each set limits on you know we have limits put placed upon us as uh, you know I've stated before, and um, we want people to push past those limits and redefine what's possible for them through this technology. So that's, uh, you know, my thoughts on the, the movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Piggybacking off of, um, what Ricky just said, you know, we obviously last week, we just defined for you guys what, like what extropian is and how extropian really means that we want to help humans, um, push past their limits by using technology and science. And that's kind of where that redefine what's possible movement came from is, you know, how, how do you push past your limits? Well, you redefine what's po like, what's possible. You change, like you take what people think is possible and you change it by, by the actions that you're able to do. Um, and whether it's actions, whether it's thoughts, you know, just doing stuff that people before would have said like, Oh, you can't do that. Or that can't be done, you know, and saying, no, it can be done and I'm going to do it. Um, and that's kind of, you know, what we want people to think and say and feel when they're, when they're using our technology or, you know, associating themselves with, with Extropian is we want them to, to say like, why can't I do this? Like, why, like, just cause you don't think it's possible for me to do, doesn't mean it's, it's not possible. I'm going to redefine what is possible. Um, and I think that's where that slogan kind of came from. I mean, yeah, just to add on what everyone saying i think of like uh you know when, when this company started out we were focusing solely on martial arts and and you know fighters and cutting weight and things like that and uh a lot of this a lot of the time when a, when a fighter wants to uh to try like a new weight class and stuff they're they're kind of not sure if they can they're not sure if that it makes sense for them to do that but you know using our technology that they would know for like a certainty whether they can or not or, or they would be able to say like i it's it's possible for me to, to go down to this weight class or things like that. So that's kind of how it started. But then, you know, we expanded it out to that slogan can apply to anyone, not necessarily just, you know, like a uh, combat sports athletes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's, it's a mindset is what I was going to get at, Raul. It's a mindset that we want people to have um, while utilizing our technology um, and just in life in general. Um, we want everybody to redefine what's possible. Anybody that uh, utilizes this technology, they have that mindset of like every day going into the gym, going into work, going into, you know, school, and, uh, you know, I'm going to redefine what's possible today. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to change the game today. I'm going to flip, uh, 
I'm gonna flip things on their head today and just be the best version of myself. And uh, that's you know that's redefining what's possible in a nutshell, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and and what I'm hearing is is although that that sort of fighting spirit and that competitive spirit is is at the core of what Extropian does and what it stands for. Um, I I mean, it sounds like this uh, this product it's not just for fighters, right? Yeah, it's it, no. it seems no, not at all. It seems like uh, it, it's for everyone. It's for anyone who, like you guys said, is able to redefine what's possible. Um, I've noticed that you guys are are uploading stuff on on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, specifically. Uh, you know, you guys are highlighting some pretty cool people, right? And you're calling them uh, extropians, like we talked about in last week's episode. Um, what what ties all these people together? What what makes them redefine what's possible what brings them to that movement yeah um i mean i think what really brings them all together you know we so far you guys have probably only seen you know maybe one or two posts um but over time you know we're going to continue to post these people and they're not all going to be you know like athletes or you know people who have physically done something remarkable, but they could also be someone who intellectually or emotionally has done something that, you know, people at the time thought was crazy. Um, and it's just kind of, you know, they, we want this to, you know, be redefining what's possible in, in every sense of, you know, doing something that's never been done before, doing something that people thought they couldn't, like, that people told them, oh, you wouldn't be able to do that. And that's kind of what ties all of these people that we've been highlighting together is, their their need and their you don't you know desire to like to push beyond what people said they could do and you know do something greater than that um and i think that really is what like what the core um like reason is for highlighting the people that we've chosen to highlight yeah and just i don't know if you want to touch on anything because you um, you had a pivotal um, hand in like us crafting some of these people. Um, oh yeah, I didn't know if you were going to be talking next. Uh, yeah, uh, so no. I think ahead, for uh, for uh, yeah the the kind of person of the week thing that we've been doing, or I think this is our second week now that we'll be doing it. Um, I mean, I think Sean kind of hit it, hit the nail on the head. Is that you know we're trying to highlight people that experience some sort of challenge, whether it was like a physical challenge or like a like a mental challenge, like breaking through like some sort of barrier in their in their own lives, and um, maybe even using technology as a way to break through those barriers. I feel like uh, Bethany Hamilton, the first person that we posted last week, is the perfect person to kick off uh, uh, this sort of, I guess, series that we're going to be doing, where we talk about people like that. Where you know she uh, she went through that incident where she got attacked by a shark and she lost her arm, but then a, a month later she was back on the beach surfing again. So I feel like she's she's like the perfect sort of definition of what like uh what we want extropian to be like defined as if we if we were to think of like a person and um yeah I just think we have a we have like a cool list of people that we're putting together that uh I, I'm excited for everyone else to see as we continue to post about it. Yeah, and I think too to pivot off what we both said is that you know in in identifying these people we're identifying the qualities that um we. You know, we want to highlight that we believe our technology could bring out on other people. Um, you know, with the Bethany, Bethany situation, there's probably, you know, people with, you know, two arms that don't believe in what, you know, they can do what she's doing with one arm. Um, you know, that is, you know, there's always that uh, kind of, as I said, perceived, perceived before perceived limit that um, people have. And, you know. Where I got to know Bethany was on uh, Amazing Race. It's a show, you know, that I watch where, you know, it's ultra competitive and, you know, you already judging the, everybody that comes on that show before they get on. Like, oh, I don't think this person's going to be able to do this and do that. And I mean, she was beating everybody, beating everybody else in the physical challenges. So, um, yeah, they, you know, these people that we're hi highlighting, they're extraordinary in all of these different uh, in all of these different uh, ways. But I think more than anything, their mindset is pretty similar um, that they, you know, they're not going to be stopped. They're just going to push through 
and uh you know they're all extraordinary people in different ways but it's you know i always go back to their mindset that mindset is uh their mindsets are all kind of similar and um that's you know that's what you'll see in each one of those individuals um that's what ties all of them together and that's you know that's what we want to do with our technology is tie, like build help people build that mindset um that i won't be stopped i won't be defeated absolutely absolutely and in in terms of our technology i know we can't give too much away um but i did want to talk a little bit about how some of our technologies might be able to change things and help uh, anyone, anyone listening redefine what's possible for them, for the world. You said with health, Rowan? Yeah, with like with the with the device. Uh, you know how how do you guys feel like uh, you know technology might be able to change things for people listening, um, and how how might uh, our technology be able to redefine what's possible? Uh, for them, you know? Well, one of the things I think that makes us different that may make it easier for people to, you know, to monitor this, monitor themselves, to manage their, their health is that, you know, we're creating a user experience that's natural. We don't want to, you know, I think a lot of people get, you know, bogged down by, oh, I'm wearing this device. Oh, you know, and it's, it's a reminder that they have something external um, attached to them that that's, collecting all this information. Um, you know, our user experience is, is, like I said before, is like a natural experience. We want people to have that sense that um, they don't have anything on at all. They're able to go about their, their day. They're able to be them, themselves. They're able to move, move about with no restrictions. And um, with that being said, I think it's a, a easy user ad adaption um, to use something that doesn't feel foreign to you. Um, you know, if you have health issues or you have health concerns, um, you're able to have these these things on you where you're being monitored, you know, 24 seven. And, um, you know, as you said before, we can't reveal too much at this time. Um, you know, we're, we're giving out little bits and pieces here and there, but when people see this thing and they, you know, see how you interact with it as a user, I think it's gonna change the game as far as um, people being a little um, reluctant to, to manage their health and monitor their health with technology. Absolutely, absolutely. And you you touched on it a little bit, uh, Ricky, but I did want to ask all you guys. Um, in before you move this... on. Sorry, what's up? Sorry, before you move on, I wanted to address the question as well. Um, I think too, you know, and Justin could probably back me up here is, um, we're both, you know, kind of from a data perspective, you know, um, have that like data, data science background. Um, our, you know, techno having technology that will allow you to, to quantify some of the things that you're doing and being able to say like, oh, like this change that I made to, to something that I'm doing is making this much of an impact versus you know, finding things that aren't making an impact. And, you know, um, you can even, you know, use it to, like, to just show, you know, progression, regression. Um, you know, everyone's constantly trying to improve themselves, but you're, you're now going to, with our device, be able to quantify that improvement more so than you were before um, in a lot of situations. So, I think that's one of the main pieces that always hits me is like, I, I love data and I, I don't always trust it, but I trust it a lot of the time. Um, and I like making data driven decisions. And I think, you know, having as much data as you can from, you know, uh, from a perspective of being, you know, of wanting to improve, that's, it's only going to be more and more helpful. So um and like ricky said having a an interface and a system that will you know not only present that data to you but present it in a way that's understandable and digestible um that's obviously a, a key component as well so okay sorry you can no yeah no that's a great point it's it's not enough to just have the numbers we need to be able to read them too right we need to be able to do something with them uh make decisions based on them change our training right 
our, our diet, our water consumption, anything. Yeah. Um, and Justin, I didn't know if you wanted to pivot off it as well, but no, Sean hit the, the nail on the head there. Um, also too, I think to another thing to kind of top off that, um, what Sean said is, yeah, we want it to be, make sense to each individual. Um, we don't want, we want to personalize, you know, we want to personalize your, your information where, um, you know, it's not like me and Sean are going off of, uh, you know, this metric and kind of basing it off of, uh, you know, off of, uh, what each other might see. We want it to be something that it makes sense to Sean. It makes sense to me. It makes just sense of Justin. It makes sense to Raul where, um, you know, you, you basically are the product that, that, that's what, you know, when people see this thing and see how you interact with it and see the data, you know, you are the wearable essentially. Um, and you know, you are the, you are the system, you're the, the machine. And so, um, yeah, Justin, I don't know if I, uh, if you had anything you wanted to add to that or not, but that was my, uh, last part of it. That, you know, like working out or, uh, being in like a master's program where I study data, uh, like for all of my classes and stuff, you just, you really understand like the importance of, of being able to make those types of decisions that are based off of, based off of data, based off of, uh, uh, like your analysis of that. And I think for people that, uh, you know, like the everyday person that uses this, that it'll help them make those sort of better decisions for them, for their health, for, for, for anything really. And I think there's so much power in, in what our device will be able to give you. I know we've only the, the main, uh, you know, people that we've spoken to are like, uh, people that are trying to become professional athletes and they stay, every person we've showed it to, they've loved it. They've loved the data that we, that is accessible to them through our technology. But I just think about like the average person that doesn't necessarily do combat sports, how much, you know, utility that they would get out of using our, our technology. So, um, this, this technology that we're building, this device, I think it's, it's going to provide a lot of value for people. It's going to be able to teach them a lot, a lot about themselves. And, uh, I think ultimately that's, that's the biggest thing is just, it's, we're edu we're helping people to educate themselves about their own body. I feel. Yeah. Oh yeah, this thing's gonna this thing's gonna change things. And in, in terms of uh, the 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 features and the utility, like you guys said, there is so much that the average person or someone on their way to being a professional athlete can gain from something like this. Um, but on top of the benefits, um, we we do you know we care about how uh, these athletes and these exceptional people. Uh, feel when they're using this product, right? So I, I did want to ask you guys, um, how do you guys want users to feel when you're when they're using this product? Oh, look, when you guys go first. Amazing! I want them to feel amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like I'm about to steal Ricky's, but <laughs> I, I want I want them to feel like they're not using something, you know, like. If they're going about their daily activities and, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, going for their daily walk or, you know, training for, you know, a combat sports fight, you know, what, whatever that person's thing is, you know, if they can have this device on them and not even, like, realize it or not even, un like, recognize that it's on there other than, you know, obviously them checking the app and seeing the data, but like from a actual feel perspective, if they don't even know that they're wearing a device, that's, you know, crazy. It's something that's like, you can't say that about the other options on the market. You can't say, oh, you know, I'm wearing this, so this device or that device. And I don't even know I have it on. No, you're going to know you have it on. It's, it's clunky and stuff. And our device is hopefully going to change that without giving too much away. <laughs> One thing I was going to say is um, we're all comp real competitive people on here. You guys will get that um, probably soon when we start going into more episodes and everything. I thought Sean was about to uh, to start calling out the competition. But, um, no, Sean touched on it. He, he did steal my thunder a little bit. But I think that, uh, you know, I'll also add to that confident. You know, I want people to each day that they, they utilize this technology to – say, hey, I'm going to be the best version of myself. I'm going to be better than I was yesterday. And, um, you know, that's where, you know, the data that we talked about earlier comes in. 
Um, you know, we want people to say, hey, like yesterday, yeah, I was here and I was doing this, whatever activity you're doing, like you, you see how you existed yesterday, but you know, like you have the confidence with this technology to, to say, damn it, I'm gonna be better than I was yesterday. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's what we want for, uh, our users. That's what we want for humanity is just people getting better every day, being more confident, um, you know, pushing, pushing the, uh, the limits. And, um, you know, if we all do that, you know, how much greater could society be, how much greater as fans of sports, how much greater can, you know, the teams that we, we love, um, how much greater that can they be? How can each individual in an individual sport be, you know, um, you know, from a, a everyday user perspective, how much uh, healthier can somebody be? How much safer can somebody be? Um, and, you know, the fact that, you know, we, we've brought this to people before and, you know, when we're done testing, they start walking out of uh, the facility that we're, we're doing the testing and get a feedback from because they, they forget about it. And they're like, oh, oh damn, I forgot I had this on me. Um, and that's what we want people to feel. We want people to just go about, just be free, have full freedom of movement um, and, you know, forget that they have something, you know, external to themselves on there. We want, you know, uh, I use the term um, symbiotic, but yeah, we want a symbiotic relationship between our technology and, and the users uh, and, and our end user. Um, you know, like I said, we want you to feel like you are the, the device, you are the machine that's, um, that's driving these, the, the, the data, which you really are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we have, you know, these sorts of, you know, exceptional people and they're going to be walking around with this product and they're going to be feeling amazing and confident, right? Because they won't necessarily feel it. Um, and they're going to be able to essentially better themselves through data and with all this data driving, you know, moving around and flowing around everywhere, uh, eventually people get competitive or collaborative. And where I'm going with this is a community starts to develop, right? And that's that's the main goal with all of this, is growing a, a sort of powerful community that wants to, like Justin said, improve themselves, whether it's their health or anything they can think of, you know? And, and I guess my question to you guys is, uh, what kind of community do you want to create with Extropian? Well, I think... I think the name Extropian says it all. Um, and I think we've all touched on, you know, elements of, of this community, that, uh, the people that we want to have in this community, um, you know, people that want to push boundaries, people that, you know, don't believe in limits, people that believe that records are meant to be broken, um, people that want to be limitless. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I always, you know, through every, Every different uh, version of this company, you know, that's something that I always preached and something, if you go back to old content, is the word limitless. Um, you know, humanity, you know, and, and our mind, you know, and what we're capable of, we're all limitless. But um, until we see and we have physical evidence a lot of times, we don't believe in that. And so we want people that, you know, want proof of that, people that believe that it's, they're capable of that. And, you know, for them to bring people along that maybe don't feel that way or don't believe in themselves, you know, uh, to bring them along because, you know, I think through our technology, we can help people develop that mindset as well. But, um, you know, we just, you know, this community, we want it to be built with people that, you know, believe in doing extraordinary things. and you know, like the name Extropian states, you know, people that want to build a better world, a better person, um, better people through technology, through research, through um, development of, uh, of uh, you know, new innovative tools. Absolutely. And yeah, piggybacking off of that, not only people who want to do extraordinary things, but people who want to do ordinary things better. You know, like you can, you can be an average Joe or average Jane and you can, you can do your daily tasks, but do them better. If you, if you know the data and you know what you're doing and you have something that's actually giving you feedback on the things that you're doing. So 
Um, but yeah, back to the question of, you know, what kind of community do we want to create? I think we want to create a, obviously a community of, you know, like, like minded individuals, like minded uh, people who have this kind of mindset of, you know, I'm, I'm okay with technology helping me reach, you know, goals that I, that I might not have been able to reach on my own, or, you know, even creating goals that they didn't even have before because they didn't know that they were trying to reach a goal. And now they, now they can realize, Hey, I, I now know how to quantify this. I want to be able to do this. And, you know, that gives them something that gives them a goal, you know, create not only reaching goals, but creating goals that they might not even have had before. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing too, is, you know, just people who, um, you know, we want people to kind of connect, with with us and you know that's why we that's why we do this that's why we like having our podcast and stuff we want um people to just be be able to see our journey and see you know our company from the from the inside out and you know see how we're doing things and um hopefully kind of creating a new standard for what you know what companies can do and how they can interact with people and and make it so that there's uh like a human connect like a connection between the company and the and the user or the company and the and the followers um that's stronger than just you know a typical oh i buy stuff from them yeah absolutely um i didn't know justin if you want to say anything um on that I mean, you guys, you guys pretty much said like everything that you can't say about this question. I feel like you guys answered it really well. I just, yeah, I think the community we want to make is, you know, some uh, people that, you know, we want people to to follow us that are constantly trying to improve themselves and in, in some way or another, whether they're an athlete or a firefighter or whoever it is that you know they're always trying to find new ways to better themselves and. Uh, I think our technology will uh, be able to help people do that. So I think it'd be really cool if, you know, as we continue to grow, our community will grow and uh, we'll continue to grow and more people with that mindset will kind of just be drawn to what we're doing. Yeah, we want to, I think we want to make just technology cool and make it, you know, there's, you know, there's a certain way people view technology and how they integrate into their everyday lives. We want to make that more seamless, make it more, uh, you know, make it cool, make it cool to use a product, make, you know, make it, uh, just make it you, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's hard to kind of define that right now. Cause you know, we haven't shown the product, but, um, you know, the product is you. And, and once you see, once you actually see this technology, it's, it's so different. It's so unique. It's so, um, it's just drastically different from what else is out there right now. But, you know, we can really, you know, I think we could really change the game on how people interact with, like Sean said, with companies that build technology. Right now we feel like it's, you know, it's a very rigid, you know, uh, truly appreciative of everything people have done, you know, going before us. Um, but we just have a different way of doing it. We have a different way of conveying um, our message to people. and. Um, you know, we want we want to build that community of people that are into tech, a community that people are that are athletes, people that are, uh, you know, have a strong mindset and believe in in um, how powerful your you know you you your mind is and how you can change pretty much anything in your life through your mindset and and through um, utilizing you know the, the the strongest muscle in your body, your brain. But um, you know. Anybody that's, you know, kind of just into bettering themselves and just think that there's a, you know, that there's a better way to uh, push humanity forward. We want those people involved with this. And, you know, we just want to make technology cool again and um, or cool, you know, for the first time in, in a lot of respects. But, yeah, we're just we're, we're very different um, and we want to exist as a different, you know, very different as a product in, in uh, way, the way that people use it and just the way people view technology companies and, and their interactions with um, with technology on a daily basis. MTC, make technology cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. MTC. New hashtag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 
Uh, we, we've talked a lot of, about a lot today, but mostly we've talked about what it means to redefine what's possible. Um, do you guys have any last points or any last notes before we uh, call it a pod, call it a cast? Yeah, just join, you know, join our movement. Um, it's it's going to be a fun ride. Um, obviously, you know, from a company standpoint, there's the highs, there's the lows, but, um, you know, we want to be, we want to be authentic with everybody and, and kind of bring everybody on the, on, along on this ride, because I think there's, you know, there's a lot of things that we can share, a lot of inspiration that we can share, a lot of motivation. Hopefully we can save people from, you know, some of the mistakes that we might make, but yeah, let's, let's, let's all just jump on this thing together and redefine what's possible and, and change the world and, and just make it a, uh, you know, help people make more impactful decisions and, and um, you know, better people's lives through data and through technology and, and you know, just build a, build a stronger, uh, better functioning human and, and humanity and uh, in turn, just a better world. Good stuff. Good words from the great CEO, Ricky Alphonse. Thank you. That's as well word as, as I could have wanted, so I'm going to let podcast go with that <laughs> yeah, I, I can't think of anything other else to end that so i had to steal your thunder back sean so i had to i had to bring out the big guns on the last uh last question there. <laughs> hey, it's okay i'll i'll steal the thunder next week or the week after that I and mean, you know don't worry we'll go back and forth and justin you know you'll pet you'll we're steal the thunder this, then, you know i told you guys you see the competitive side at some point you're starting to see it we're very <laughs> You know, this is the the kind of the start of uh, the podcast, so we're all getting comfortable. We're getting used used to this, but uh, you guys will probably be uh, part of some pretty uh, funny conversations down the road um, when our competitive sides come out more. But um, <laughs> I'll pass it back to you, Rob. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So I think uh, that'll be it uh, for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this has been Sean, Justin. CEO Ricky Alphonse, uh, myself Raul. Uh, this has been the Built Different Podcast. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a good night. Bye.